Hey everybody! Woo woo! It's 2023. I got you. <laughs> we gotta have a new jingle, dude. <laughs> uh, this is not scripted, as you can tell. Oh, uh, God. Very, uh, fly by the seat of my. I, I look like I'm hiding in my fucking parents' bedroom. So, uh, just finding a place to to wrap with my man Andy here. What's up? It What's is, up, dude? Uh, 2023. Uh, it's amazing. We're already a month in. It's February. Um, my fault for not uh, getting these recorded. So I've been uh, putting the delay on Andy and I uh, having a chat. Excuse me. Um, but I think it's pretty cool that uh, that we can come back on and and kind of share a lot of what's happening with real estate. Um, yeah, there's a lot going on. I mean, you're you're helping people do some calling. What's uh, what are what are you hearing out there? Let me scratch my uh, whole the whole mixture of stuff, man. You know the the game is changing for whatever it's yeah. worth, you know, uh, so tell, it, talk a little bit. What's the game? What's changing in the game? Is the value changing? Is it the interest rate changing? Is it the competition? I think, the comp know? honestly, I think the competition is changing. So, you know, one of the biggest things that, that we're hearing a lot more is a lot more agents are calling, right. <laughs> but, but it's not necessarily a skilled phone call. So, right. <laughs> uh, right. you know, because the agents aren't necessarily used to making their calls or anything else around those lines, like the, the skill goes out the damn window, which means that the clients or the leads get, get pissed. I mean, right. It, yeah. So it, it hurts. Exactly it is burden. Yeah. So we're I heard hearing, someone say the other day that, uh, and this is no offense, my dear friends, but realtors are like horrible direct marketers, yeah. <laughs> you know? So if us as, uh, as providers of benefit can teach these guys how to market, how to say the right thing, how to approach the call, you know, you can have a lot of success. Yeah. So I think it's, it's also a lot more how, how the, for me, how the game has changed is, is that it's not just the, and we've talked about this a little bit. It's not just the calling piece. Right. Yeah. So then the, the number of different ways that people are, are actually reaching out needs to be more than just calls. It can't just be yeah. calls and calls is a great freaking start, but it's got to be more than just that. Right. right. So like, yeah. And there's, there's got to be some accountability, right. Then just right. Uh, you know, there and, and the hard work has to pay off. Like, it's funny, like you, you, you sell a list to someone and they're like, all right, dude, where, where are the listings? Or I called 50 and I didn't get one. Right. <laughs> so it's yeah. funny that you said that too. So we've, we track a lot, right? So inside of the number yeah. of calls that we make, we track a lot. Um, and on average, like it's not only the number of dials and the number of conversations, we actually track the number of no's that it takes in order to drive a lead or the number of no's it takes to right. set an appointment. Right. In the, it's interesting too, because the number of no's has actually gone up in this last like three month, this last 90 day period. So right. anything that is obviously a colder source is typically like 24 no's, like circle prospecting. 24 right. knows before you're setting an appointment. Yeah, totally. All right. Let, is, hey, dude, I got something on circle prospecting too. All right, um, we, we have an agent in Florida. Uh, I'll drop his name is Isaac. And, and what he does, and so, you know, our company, you can either, you know, buy the data from us, the name and address. Um, a lot of agents and Isaac is pulling data from Remind. So we circle prospecting around a listing in a neighborhood. A lot of MLSs park. have access to that as well. Yes. Yeah, so the MLS, yes. And I call it MLS data. So if you could pull a, a very targeted circle prospecting around a listing, around a sold property and export that data. And, you know, substantially it was a, I think it was a thousand records or 1500 records that he exported from a neighborhood. And what we did is we enhanced it with name. We enhanced it with, because some of those are just addresses even. So mm -hmm. we enhance it with uh, the owner occupied name. Uh, if the owner occupied is not there, then we gave them that name, the phone number, the cell phone, the landline. We are also um, flagging the do not call. And that's going to be something that I'll I'll talk about here in a second. And and the, the best part to think about it and, and adding email address, but the best part is then we are adding a flag for, are they likely to sell? Are they a downsizer? Or are they distressed? You're doing that on the circle prospecting side. Exactly. So, That's so cool. these guys are pulling a circle prospecting list from Remind or the MLS, exporting it to me. We're running like a, it's a, you know, it's a very enhanced circle prospecting return file that's letting you know who's on the do not call. There's their cell phone. They're likely to sell. They're a downsizer. They're distressed. Um, and, and so it allows you to, while you want to navigate through that whole neighborhood or hold that whole circle that's prospecting, cool. you prioritize it by, you know, the elements that we're able to tell you by the data that we have. So, I think that's pretty pretty neat. Uh, that you know something that we're we're going to probably launch and, and identify as a new product here pretty soon. That is very cool. 
Yeah. I don't think there's honestly, man, like I don't think there's anybody else who's doing something that in depth. Yeah. We've done the, the enhancement with the, the contact information, but then flagging right. data based right. off of, some of the, that's the kind of, that we have is, is really cool. You know, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. And then you can segment it and target. And then what was your DNC call. thing? DNC. So do not call has been popping up <laughs> in the, the, you know, in the name it's been around forever. I remember when I worked for a, a data company that do not call, um, we, you know, you'd have to get a subscription account number, the SAN, they call right. it, had to register five area codes. And that was just to get a scrubbed number, you know, and then you would sign an exemption form if you wanted all phone numbers. And back in the early 2000s, no one was getting all phone numbers. It was like, dude, these better be scrubbed. I mean, the do not call was like the FBI, right. you know, Ice-T with CSI popping in there doing a, uh, you know, Ice Cube and him, <laughs> CSI uh, investigation with the snarl. But, yeah. Yeah, no, totally. So, you know, it's evolved. The, you know, the list uh, uh, has grown, the do not call list, but the enforcement also has been, you know, lackadaisical. Right. Um, and, and so now I think because it is in the news, Keller Williams getting hit with a really yeah. large fine and a lot of it's attributed to, you know, a lot of a large brokerage calling, you know, the same lead over and over again. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, expireds and for sale by owner are, probably more prone to a violation when multiple people are calling. But um, with us, I think, you know, if you, if you have an existing list that you have uh, built through the years, you can utilize a service like us to flag the do not calls for you. So you, you can automatically know mm -hmm. what they look like. Um, furthermore, know, you know, the rules and the regulations. So, you know, to me, like if you're prospecting, do not call phones for, you know, selling a product like a security system or maybe a timeshare relief or, you know, something that's, you know, pretty aggressive or aftermarket, aftermarket warranty, like the big balloon roll around, um, you know, you are selling something. But with real estate, one of the exemptions is survey related, right? Or, you know, non, non selling uh, conversation. And really, you're asking them, you know, if they're interested in hearing a fair offer for their house, isn't asking them to sell their house. So how you approach the phone call one is very beneficial to uh, adhering to the do not call. Last but not least, and I'm really long winded here is the cell phone data that we are compiling and getting, you know, after the fact, the contact information, we are getting, you know, an opt in by clicking here in a privacy policy that reads to the fact that by opting in, you are eliminating, you know, the fact that you are on the do not call. And so we are now, you know, available to market that phone number. Uh, there has been an instance that it has come up that someone said, Hey, my phone is on the do not call. This was a cell phone only. Right. And we went back and looked up at that. They were on, you know, loans for you.com in 2022, wow. but you know, this is their time and date stamp. And so that offers some, security in your marketing you know yeah. a lot of people are, are really scared about what's going on with the do not call but you rely on someone that's been doing this a long time that understands the state and federal do not calls and and then the rules around it and then ultimately has data that that is um you know clear free and clear from the do not call it's uh it's important because call tools for example i think has you know stopped all uh marketing to to any data on the do not call you know so There's multiple warnings that that come up at this point so like if someone buys on the real estate side someone buys data through mojo or red x or anything else around those lines the the number of warnings that come up on the dnc side is i'll say exorbitant but obviously necessary for them to see why yeah. you know and that's a really good point andy because at the end of the day it's not on the data supplier uh, it's on the data advertiser. So it's right. the marketer that that is ultimately responsible for that. And when we deliver the data, we send our our terms of use uh, of the data and we we obviously clear our name and uh, you know it's anyway. exactly why we don't control the data on our side. We actually have the agents control the data when they do that as well. Yeah, and, and they are the advertiser. You know, there's there's ways uh, you know that some marketing companies go around it. Like when we used to do some stuff for this timeshare, they wouldn't like on purpose, tell you who they were, or why they were calling until they booked the appointment, mm -hmm. you know? And so there's, there's vague ways around it and there's, um, you know, other, other ways to, to do it. But, you know, at the end of the day, we are doing it the right way and the most um, uh, conservative, respectful way um, that we can, uh, but still, you know, are knowing that, that it's a very valuable uh, uh, asset is outcome yeah. market. So I would, I'd, for whatever it's worth, for anyone listening and they're looking at these lists and they're still leery about the DNC, I mean, 
I would highly encourage them to either meet with you or one of the other reps, obviously, yeah. you know, and, and have that conversation around what does this really look like? And um, obviously right. understanding that the responsibility is theirs for that data, but also understanding where you guys are actually pulling the data from and how that opt-in actually works. And we are here to help, you know, we're not right. going to like, you're not going to be like, beep, beep, beep. this number is disconnected when they're calling you know, we want to we want to be uh, uh, an ally, a resource. And yeah, if you have any questions, um, you know, we can help. And there's there's definitely ways to, to do it the right way. And so that's a good point, man. It is uh, always a pleasure. What else? Uh, what else do we got going on? So, I mean, with with right now, obviously, the spring market is starting to pick up right after Super right. Bowl. You know, I mean, Super Bowl being this weekend. Uh, as much as I live in Eagles territory, I'm not an Eagles fan. So that's what are you? Are you a, what NFL team? I'm I'm a Giants fan, man. Uh, uh, I, yeah. I bleed yeah. blue all day long. That's all right. so, yeah. Unfortunately, the Eagles ate you guys up. That's uh, that's accurate in every yeah. way, shape, and form. Yeah. So so yeah. I am rooting for the Eagles to to win this weekend just Me because too, I live dude. here locally. And if Please. I didn't, I'd be eaten alive by my neighbors. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. with Smart move. with that being said, like right after Super Bowl hits, I mean, if you're in a in Eastern state, uh, honestly, the majority of markets start to really pick up after Super Bowl. So I yeah. would encourage people to start, put, honestly, getting their lists in process now. Uh, yes. Go back towards the absentee owner side. Go back to downsizers. Again, downsizers are a huge source right now and have more conversations with you guys around what other people are seeing and and, and honestly getting totally. experience with. Totally. You know, that uh, that's so true. Um, and yeah. Listen to what Andy's saying because he's spitting some knowledge, baby. And I am in Kansas City's neighborhood territory, and I hope they lose 100 to negative 40. I can't stand cheap band. And I'm talking to you. Yeah. You, so on you. record, by the way, my my score prediction is 31 to 14. All right. I like that. My score prediction, 35 to 17. Oh. Philly. Uh, I got Philly Eagles, winning. Philly's winning for sure. Um I, I I can't. My kids were so pissed. So we are diehard Denver Bronco fans. I mean, well below, well b- uh, before the the eighties. I can remember when in, uh, Elway was uh, drafted, you know, by the Colts and came to Denver uh, in nineteen eighty three. I've been a Bronco fan ever since. Uh, seven years ago, yesterday they won their last Super Bowl uh, when they dismantled uh, the Carolina Panthers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do remember this. But I told myself, t- you know, seven dismantled? years dismantled. Is that really how you want to phrase it? Dismantled. Yeah, Von Miller, defensive MVP. All right, keep going. MVP. Uh, but anyway, so I told my kids, I'm like, all right, dude. After they won, I'm like, I could never. Broncos don't have to make the playoffs for ten years, you know, and I'm good. So I only have three more years, dude. And Denver has not made the playoffs since. We did hire Sean Payton and uh, we're off and running, baby. So yeah, next year is the Broncos year to at least win more. Well, real estate agents, if you want to win, like the Eagles are going to this weekend, reach out to these guys, man. Boom, Uh, boom, boom. Andy, much love, dude. I will talk to you way too soon and uh, have a beautiful day. Yes, sir. What up?